So let me tell you a little bit about the RS6. I've owned this RS6 Performance now for two and a half years. Uh, before that I had a red RS6. Now did I notice the difference in power between the two vehicles? Well I have to say, not really to be honest with you. Uh, 540 to 600 brake horsepower. You're not going to notice a hell of a lot of difference. But hey, you know, 0.2 seconds gives you a bigger dick, doesn't it, at the end of the day. Anyway, so what do I like about my RS6 performance? Well, whenever I'm in it, I just feel like I'm at home. It's such an easy car to drive. And I was really quite anxious when I first got my RS6 because I thought it was going to be uncomfortable because I'd had other RS cars before. I'd had an RS5 convertible. And that was a bit of a backbreaker, to be honest. It was very, very harsh. Nowhere near as harsh as, say, an M3, but it was still a very harsh drive. So um, it was a bit of a, um, let's say, a delight when I actually got the RS6. and actually found out that it was extremely comfortable, even in dynamic mode. So you've got dynamic, you've got um, comfort mode, you've got normal mode, and you've got... Um, got the mode uh, which is individual whereas you can take all the different elements of uh, the the, uh, the car and you can you can put the steering in one and the gearbox in another and the suspension in another so you could still have the comfort suspension if you like uh, if you really wanted that and you could have everything else really sharp and dynamic that's I suppose if you've got the uh, the other half in the car for me however um, I find that just running it in dynamic mode is perfect. You know, you don't really get uncomfortable, to be honest. Even if I was going on a, a long journey on the motorway, it wouldn't bother me too much. I probably would stick it in comfort mode then, but uh, it doesn't really bother me too much. So, living with the RS6 is just brilliant. I mean, it is just... A brilliant brilliant car I mean you've got everything in this car you've got as I've said focused on the comfort aspect but this is a bit of a beast it's got a, a V8 engine with 600 brake horsepower on tap uh, which is absolutely epic so I'm driving along a country road at the moment in sports mode third gear fourth gear it's auto changing it's just pottering along but I'll show you when I get onto the, um, the, the, the sort of open road what it's like I've got to be a bit careful around these roads because there's a lot of potholes so but so inside wise you know the instrument panel of this um, RS6 is not the latest technology you haven't got all those um, electronic dashboards that you can change the view etc etc it's a good old-fashioned um, retro you know rev counter speedometer in the middle you've got your little bits that you can play with and you get a also you get your um, you know, your sat nav uh, instrument panel etc but what I um, what I really like about this car as well is you've got this head-up display which I think if you get a chance to get a head-up display in any car I think it should be the number one option that you choose because quite frankly it's epic it is an epic way of driving uh, you no longer do you have to keep looking down at your speedometer your speed is right in front of you uh, the speed limit for the road is in front of you which isn't always accurate but a good night of time so I'm just going to sneak out in front of a van here an effortless smooth acceleration from 0 to 70 there in literally about you know three or four seconds it was just effortless okay and that really wasn't even pushing it so if you were to obviously slam it into manual using the uh, the gear lever you're going to get a lot more of the pops and crackles as you go along um, 
I like to vary it. Inside the cabin, you've got this dual aspect uh, sunroof, which you can see on the camera, which is pretty good. And um, I'll open it for you for a second. A bit, a bit noisy. But it goes all the way back. So you've got, uh, you know, a pretty, a pretty good uh, open air space. If that's really what you want. So I'll just shut that up so we don't get the old. Uh, and then if you really want to, you can blank off the sunroof, so you can make the car feel as if you're in a nice little darker space, a nice little dark chasm, if you like. So you've got those options all the time, really. Two options. So I'm just going to slam the, uh, the car now into manual mode as I turn right, and I'm going to go along a few country roads. Hopefully the sun's going to not go out, not uh, be in my eyes. But you can probably hear already. Now we're warmed up a little bit. The surface outside is a little bit greasy. It is 7 degrees today, so it shouldn't be too bad, but respect the road surfaces all the time when you're driving cars because you know you never really know what's going on um, what the surface is like so you've just got to pay respect really too many drivers try and be cocky try and uh, you know just show off if you like but that's not what the RS6 is about the RS6 is about heavenly driving it's ultimate driving in my view. I've taken this car around the Alps. I've done the Stelvio Pass. I've done a lot of passes uh, in, in the Alps, the Furka Pass, and, and um, it's, it's fantastic, it's great. Okay, it's not as agile as, uh, as a supercar when I took my R8 there, or when I go around in the old Ferraris, Lambos, McLarens, Porsches, etc. Okay, it's not gonna be in that sort of world, but. If you want to put your luggage in the back and you want to go on tour and you've got your, your family and you've got your wife or you've got your dog or you've got your, your mum with the old wheelchair or, or walking frame, it's epic. Golf clubs, you know, you can probably fit a good couple of sets in the back and some luggage. Uh, perfect. Uh, I'm heading down to uh, the south coast to play a bit of golf uh, in the next couple of months. So I'll bung the cars in, take a mate with me. Uh, epic, you know, very, very good. It's a perfect all round car, really. Inside this car, uh, this is a, an Audi uh, exclusive car. Um, so, what I did is um, I, I sorted out a few things. One was the, uh, the obviously the paint job, which was in um, uh, sort of a, a matte uh, Nardo grey. Now, they told me originally I couldn't have it. I showed them a picture of one in a German showroom. They uh, they eventually said that they would make it just for me in the UK, which was pretty epic, really. Um, and so I've not seen another one in the UK. Someone sent me a picture the other day showing me one uh, of one in um, uh, Spain. But other than that, um, you know, I haven't really um, seen another one. Um, so uh, quite excited the fact that you've got a car that nobody else has got. In terms of what it looks like I've had it wrapped I got this one particular wrapped by a company called Topaz in Wembley uh, they're one of the best in the business um, I use two companies when I wrap my cars one's called Paint Shield uh, in Peterborough who's probably one of the longest serving companies and the other one is, um, is Topaz they're probably the best two in the business so they're the two that I use um, but obviously um, inside this car we've got Alcantara absolutely everywhere you can probably just about make it up on the back of this uh, back of this sun visor this Alcantara effect is all the way from the side pillows all the way up the uh, up the back uh, of, the, of the car uh, and it's got blue stitching all the way around which is pretty epic and again you couldn't get this this was not an option 
I pushed them for this and they said we just cannot do an Alcantara interior because I've got the Alcantara on the seats, okay? Uh, I've got the honeycomb stitching on the seats, on the inset, and that is pretty epic. Um, and I just thought you could probably just make it out there um, as we're going along. The honeycomb stitching inside the leather is just pretty epic. Um, and I just wanted to go that extra mile. I just wanted my car to be different and I just wanted it to match. So yeah, I got the, um, the same, um, Alcantara they agreed to do it for me again just for me nobody else and that's what I love about Audi um, whether they do that for other people I don't know but they really do look after me anyway and um, I'm pretty happy with that uh, as well as my R8 being an exclusive car as well steering wheel nice perforated leather again blue stitching all around it um, old school steering wheel uh, it's quite big uh, but I love it. I think it's just just a trick. So I'll probably keep this car until the new one comes out. Um, it's probably not going to be out for another year. Um, so uh, unbelievably, I'll probably have to get an MOT on this car, which is not something I'm used to getting apart from my Land Rover. So um, yeah, um, but I'm not in a hurry because this car is just epic in every way. Um, it's just beautiful. It's wonderful. And uh, I've gone, I've gone to town a little bit on the old carbon fibre too. So on the inside, around the, where the, the centre console is, it's all carbon fibred up. Um, the dashboard, all the way along, all the way under, is all carbon fibre. And um, around the door handles, again, is is um, is carbon fibre. And you can probably um, no, you can't really see that, but yeah. So I've um, I've really gone to town. Um, I love this car. Um, it's got um, a nice um, Bose sound system too, um, which is really nice when you need it. And uh, overall, um, I mean, I can't fault this car really. It is absolutely epic. I'm going to be sorry to see it go, but obviously it's so excited about what Audi have done uh, with their new car uh, when it comes out. And uh, look forward to, uh, to picking a colour for that one. So uh, again, which is going to be an exclusive car. Uh, from now on, I'll always pick exclusive Audis because that's uh, obviously what I like to do. Uh, so that's a bit of a, a 12, 13 minute review of the, um, the RS6. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, look forward to uh, doing another review soon. So take care. Cheers.